Hey guys, it's Suresh. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning into another video with me today. So in honor of Barbie's birthday month, I decided that she needed some custom Suresh couture. And oh my goodness, I am so excited to share with you guys what I came up with. I think this is one of my more avant-garde pieces that I've ever created. And I absolutely love how simple, sleek, and architectural it is. This is a beautiful strapless bubble gown with an asymmetrical hem. It's a lustrous, luscious blue silk, and I think it looks so beautiful on Barbie here. It's so simple and so regal, yet just very, very understated. And then when she turns around, boom, there's a beautiful cascade of, of ruffles and bustle in the back. I love this big oversized constructed bow that's right at the bottom of her lower back there. And that then gives way to all these beautiful folds and tucks and, and pleats. So I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of my process of how I made this. I kind of ended up filming everything. Um, so here we are, I am starting to lay out the silhouette of this gown. I am draping this on a Model Muse body and because the fit is quite loose and not very structured, it can fit on most any doll. As you guys know, I like to really let the fabric talk to me and tell me what it wants to do. I don't like to constrict fabric. I don't like to be too restrictive with it, especially if it's a delicate and a shiny fabric like this. Oh my God, it's just so, so delicious. So I started by um, wrapping the fabric around her bust and just sort of letting it do its thing and I kept picking up um, you know big swatches and, and chunks of it and I've realized that it drapes and falls so beautifully so I thought to myself my god this would be really beautiful if I created like something really voluminous and something really kind of lustrous from the back and then keep it really really simple from the front um, I've also been doing a lot of research on Balenciaga's balloon coats and balloon dresses from the 50s for some work projects. So that was like, and I think at the forefront of my mind. Um, though it's an unconscious in inspiration, I think very much that it did end up inspiring me, um, along with some Helmut Lang dresses from the late 90s and early 2000s. He also did some really cool mushroom inspired dresses. Um, his were much more minimalist and avant-garde, um, but all the same, they were on the forefront of my mind because of some work that I was doing. So um, yeah, and that I then um, cut out the hem and I knew that I wanted to create something asymmetrical where her feet would show. I felt like otherwise it would just kind of look like a big lump of fabric sitting on her and having the feet exposed, I think, um, changes up that silhouette and makes it more modern, makes it more simple. So um, here I am just continuing to pin away. I am using um, bridal dressmaker pins, which are a very small pin specifically designed for delicate fabrics and um, lustrous fabrics so that when you pin them, um, it doesn't leave a big pin mark in the fabric, which is always such a bummer. As you can see, the gown is starting to take shape here. I'm playing and judging these um, folds to kind of make sure that the scale is where I want them to be and that it doesn't look like a, draw, a, a doll dress, rather it looks like uh, you know, a human sized dress gown. You guys know that I love creating clothes for dolls that don't look like doll clothes. So um, it's just a continuous process of slow judging and looking at it and just kind of letting it talk to me and turning it around, looking at it here, looking at it that way. But, um, and the great thing is Barbie is always such a wonderful model. She has no complaints. <laughs> she just stands there with her arms up and just lets me, you know, drape her and push her around. And she's just so patient and lovely with me. So after I have the initial first drape down and I have the first pinning down, I take a good look at it and then I take the dress off of Barbie and I start cutting out the lining for it. So, um, because of the asymmetrical hem of this gown, it's going to be very important that the lining is done beautifully and correctly. I decided to use the same fabric for the lining so that when you're looking at the dress from um, underneath or you happen to see a little peak of it, that everything kind of flows beautifully. So I ended up doing some measurements, um, taking out excess fabric from the inside and then cutting out the lining. Um, I always try to make sure that I can be as careful with the lining as possible because I feel that that's a very important part, especially of um, a beautiful gown like this. And then from there, it was all 
um, um, hand sewing. The only thing that I use the machine for, which you guys will see in a little bit, is that big bow that's sitting um, at her lower back. I'm using a silk polyester blend thread and again, a very small bridal um, sewing needle and I am now attaching the lining to the actual fabric um, so that when we start folding it over and we start creating more of the inside of this gown that everything is just seamless and you can't really tell where one fabric starts and one fabric ends. Um, the whole point of it is to look like it's just kind of been self-lined, if you will. So sewing away, sewing away. By the way, this whole project took me probably about 30 to 40 hours, I would say. Um, it's a long process, you guys. I make, I make it look simple, I know, but anyone who makes stuff, any of you guys who makes clothing, especially at this scale, you guys know what I'm talking about. So after I've adjusted the lining, um, I'm then doing some slip stitching here to make sure everything is looking invisible. You don't want any sewing marks to actually be visible, especially not on a gown like this, especially not on a fabric and that's as delicate and lustrous as this. So slip stitching is basically the act of um, creating a stitch where you can't see it and it's kind of hiding between two folds of fabric. And, um, and then from there, once the slip stitching is all done and the, the lining is fully attached, I'm gonna go through with my pressing cloth here and give this whole thing a very gentle steam. I'm really not touching much of the fabric with the iron because I am, because um, I'm having to iron or press the right side of the fabric, if I do touch that iron to the fabric, it will sort of very gently burn and dull the fabric. So that's a huge no-no. So a pressing cloth is very important here. And then when I am going directly onto the garment, it's because I'm actually um, using the steam and I'm not really touching the fabric, okay? So that's really, really important. I know that I've mentioned this in some other previous pressing videos. You guys have to be very, very careful with delicate fabrics, especially with, with the shiny fabric. So, um, I just wanna make sure here that all the little folds and um, unnecessary little creases are, are pressed out or steamed out because this fabric is so shiny. It really shows everything if it's not done, if it's not ironed correctly, okay? So from there, the gown is pretty much done and coming together. I wanna to start creating the bow. So I took a large panel of this beautiful fabric and kind of started creating the silhouette and the shape of a bow. Not too complicated. It was pretty much a really, really long rectangle. I'm finishing off the edges here and then um, kind of bringing it together. The bow really is more um, handwork in the finishing stages of it, but I wanted to make sure that it stays nice and uniform to size, so the machine was the best way to go with that and the most efficient. Um, I really wanted something to kind of offset the simplicity of the design, and I thought that this big avant-garde bow would kind of create a new point of interest. So um, here I am after the machine stitching is done, I'm then folding the fabric and starting to create that bow. Um, it's basically a two-part bow. The two fins are one long panel of fabric, and then we'll use one small piece of fabric to create the knot in the center, okay? So more hand sewing here. Um, got my trusty thimble here with me um, because this can get a little bit difficult to, to push a little tiny needle through this much fabric. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if any of you guys have never tried hand sewing before, I really recommend it. It's very, very therapeutic, by the way. Um, right, so here I am attaching the knot portion to the two fins. Um, I folded down some fabric, stitched it out to make a thinner column of rectangle, and then there we go. I'm now attaching it to the back of the dress. Well, I think at this point I'm kind of figuring out where it should lay, how it should be attached. By the way, this whole gown um, is held together with one silver snap. You'll see the snap here in a little bit when we get a close-up of the hand sewing, but yeah, so I just um, figure out where I want it to go and I decided that it's gonna go on to the left panel of the gown so that as the snap comes together to close the gown, the right fin of the bow kind of flops over the opening and there, and then you won't be able to see where and how it's attached, which is the whole magic of any beautifully made garment. You're never really supposed to know how it fastens and how it stays on. That's the magic of it. <laughs> Especially, I think, a gown like this that's as effortless and um, sort of heavenly looking as this, where the silhouette is very gentle. It's very, you know, 
it could fall off in any minute, but no one really knows how um, tightly it is affixed to the body. <laughs> so there we are. There's that silver snap I was talking about. That's the only um, mechanism that's holding this gown together. It's basically sitting on top of her bust and the back weight of all the bustles and the bow kind of help the dress um, pull down into the back um, and pull down into the ground. So yeah, um, that was a bit of a babble, but I wanted to show you guys how I came up with this beautiful gown. I really am so happy with it. By the way, the beautiful doll that is wearing this is one of my gorgeous silk stones from a few years ago's BFMC collection. She is Blush Beauty, and I really wanted um, a doll that had kind of a stylized hairdo, so, but something yet very simple. I think this gown is very reminiscent of something from the 50s, even the 60s, and um, I just wanted the doll to sort of convey that. So I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something. Please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Make sure to hit that little bell icon after the subscribe button. That way you guys are notified every Thursday when I upload a new video. Wherever you are in the world, I'm sending you so much love. Big hugs and kisses for me and Barbie here in New York. And I will see you guys again next Thursday for another video. Okay, bye.